What's up guys? We're in the gym. This is day, what day are we on? Four? Day four. Day three actually. Three. Day three. And it's arm day, so it's a good day. We got arms today, we're gonna help isolate them, but we're gonna start off with compound exercise, which is gonna be the cross bench dips. Is Lewis ready? Yeah. He's ready. We bust out a few reps already, just to kind of get Lewis comfortable with his positioning in this, but we'll go over it again. So the cross bench dips, much as the name explains, you're going to use two benches, or at least one bench, and something else to put your feet on. And what's happening here is it's going to help isolate the triceps a bit more than a normal dip, like you do on a dip bar here. Now the hands are placed behind you, more pressure is put on the triceps. we got to remember in this one too, is as Lewis is coming down, his arms are really reaching, his upper arms are reaching parallel to the floor. He's not going any lower than that. And he's focusing on the full contraction, the full squeeze of the top position. So it's a controlled lockout, so that way the triceps can be activating the most at that position. And when you come down, sometimes it can be a little bit uncomfortable for the shoulder joint to come down to this position. If you have a problem with that, if you have a, um, kind of a lower mobility in the shoulders, limit the range of motion on the way down and focus on the contraction of the top position there. Uh, Luce is feeling fine. Um, if he had any kind of problems or tightness in the, in the shoulder, he'd let us know. But uh, in this case, he's going with a good full range of motion, getting a good contraction, squeeze at the top. It's pretty easy, huh? Yeah, Yeah, 12 is. reps, really easy. We only do three sets. That was kind of a warm-up. Uh, we do want to add weight to this one. It's a simple a simple way to do that. We're just going to add a little bit of weight. Into, I saw that, like, uh, yeah. nervous look in his face. <laughs> it's not going to be much weight. We're going to be very, yeah. very cautious on that one. But um, we're going to add maybe a 25-pound plate and just put it in the lap. And uh, he's going to do the exact same range of motion, everything. I'll be there to... To put it on and take it off in case he's feeling a little bit too heavy for Lewis, but uh, he looks confident. I mean, yeah. this man, look at his jacks. His shirt's fitting yeah. tight. He's, he's looking good. He's looking healthy. Yep. <laughs> yep. He's got a smile on his face. He's excited. You can tell. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know why he's excited? Because he's almost done with this program, I think. Yeah. That's why he's excited. <laughs> That was just about right. Yeah. How's that feeling? Good. Yeah. Is yeah. it comfortable to weight in your lap? Yeah. yeah. It puts a little more stress on the shoulders, though. There you go. Exactly. Um, and we can adjust slightly in that one. I noticed that your shoulders are kind of coming forward a bit, um, so it's slightly pronated here. So we can try pulling them back um, a bit more, okay. which the term would be. Retract your scapula. Yeah. Right on, man. <laughs> man, this is becoming a professional. I love it. Uh, so we're going to try to kind of pull those shoulders back by retracting your scapula slightly to see if we can make some adjustments in there so that way there's not too much pressure put on the shoulder. And again, like I was saying before, um, if we're still having problems um, with the shoulder placement in this position, we'll just limit the range of motion slightly so you won't come as, quite as far down and then we'll focus on that, that full contraction at the top yeah. and that should be just as good. Because I mean realistically in this, when you're going low in this one, the lower you go doesn't mean the better it is for the triceps. Realistically, all it's gonna do is pull a little bit more on the anterior deltoid, a little bit in the chest. It's really concentrating just on the lockout, much like how we did the close grip press. If you're doing the close grip press, you're really concentrating on the full extension here, because the extension of the, tri or the elbow joint is really gonna contract triceps even more. So that's really what we're trying to focus on. So don't worry too much about going low, especially if you're feeling stress in the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Just bring it down less, you know what I'm saying? Bring your body down a little bit less and then really just focus on that squeeze. Because if you if you really lock out and you're squeezing the tricep, you get the benefit right there. Not okay. about too well. The thing you want to feel this is the stretch. So when you bring it behind your head, you're going to feel it stretching the tricep and you're just going to be extending straight up, just like that. What you'll try not to do is flare your elbows and start pushing here. Just keep your elbows kind of pointed forward. Okay. We're going to test this out. This is the first time you're doing the French press. I'm going to hand it to you. Right there, got it? Yep. Okay. So elbows there, just bend right behind your head, and then extend up. Just like that, easy. So we'll keep that up, core nice and tight. Right there, extend, good. There's two, three, we're good. Nice. Right there, there you go. Blues. 
Yep. Get that neutral chain. There we go. Pump me up. There we go. Last one. And extend. Awesome. Good job. With the placement of your elbow all of a sudden bringing it back here, you'll notice that you do feel a bit yeah. more stretch. And that's really, this one is focusing on, the street hits the tricep, so that's why they call it tri. And uh, so the one we're working on is the long head, which is kind of placed back here. It's kind of the larger portion of the tricep. Uh, so that's, this is helping to isolate kind of that portion of it. Okay. So you kind of feel it in different places, you know, and that's why we switch angles like this. It's above you, placing it here. Um, later, we're going to do some standing extension of the cable, and that's really going to be focusing more on like the lateral portion. Really, all three heads of the tricep are so contracting, but you're just placing more emphasis on a certain, you know, group in, within that within that muscle. How many groups are in your triceps? Uh, well, there's three, three uh, muscles in the tricep, which is going to be the long, which is we're kind of focusing on, the lateral, and then the medial. Um, so it's kind of like that. The one you see through here is kind of like that lateral head. Back here, if you'd like turn your arm, that's going to be like the, the long head and then kind of the inner, you don't see it as much, it's really like the medial head. Okay. Yeah, kind of like the deltoid, the street and the deltoid as well. And that'd be the anterior, lateral, and posterior. I know. If you, uh, you won't be quizzed on this <laughs> yeah, later. I don't, don't know <laughs> There's, there's all this. It's like if you look at an anatomy chart and kind of break it down, it's easier to, to um, see where it is. But. One day, when you when you go to college, yeah. you're taking kind of like I don't even know what you take. Take health. Health. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So they'll probably focus on this. Not really anatomy though. Not really. No. More to learn about like, oh, like cancer and stuff, no? diseases. Okay, that's cool. Moving on to the reverse extensions. Going over this real quick for Lewis, it's going to be a supinated grip where the palms are facing up to the ceiling. There, elbows are going to be tight to the body, and you should be extending straight down. So elbow extensions. Straight down, squeeze. What you don't want to do is kind of let that weight pick your elbows up. We're really starting to get a lot of extension in the shoulder through here. Uh, so try to keep those elbows pretty tight, relatively tight to the body. Um, try not to let them flare too much. There you go. Get that full extension. All right. Just like we do in the other ones. You want to grip like far out or close? So again, where do you want my hands? Like? Uh, right there, right at the bend. Exactly. There we go. Just about shoulder width. Know, but he's flexing at this very moment. We got him. We got him to flex. Little did he realize. <laughs> yeah, tricep gains. Looking good. Nice. Good job. I had to call you out. Triceps yeah. are looking good, man. I'm impressed. Thank you. Keep making those gains. Love it. So that felt pretty good. It's a pretty easy exercise. Very simple. Uh, these isolation exercises, the name, um, what, did, what, did it, what does it mean in isolation? You're working out one muscle. Yes, exactly. Um, and more specifically, one joint. So if you're mo working multiple joints, um, that's going to be compound. One joint means isolation, which you got the gist of it. One muscle group, 10 to. Problem thing about that is technically, if a lot of people will. If you hear some people say, well, we're, we're only working this one muscle in this isolation movement, it doesn't quite work that way. Um, there's still a lot of muscles contracting to help stabilize a movement. So a little bit of the traps and the shoulders can be helping out just slightly. So essentially, if you want to be super technical, it's not really working just one muscle, but, um, but that's why they kind of narrow it down to just like one joint or two joints or more. And that's what really differentiates compound and isolation. So. You were wrong! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on the agenda, we got some triceps out of the way. Started with the compound movement, well, kind of compound, um, with the cross bench dips. Went into more of the isolation with the French press, the reverse extensions. Now we're on a little bit more of the biceps. So we're going to start with the compound movement with the biceps, which it's compound because you're using more than one joint. Nice. So, two joints it's going to be the elbow joint, the shoulder joint. And it's focusing on the biceps, although 
in a pulling compound motion, the back's going to be activated. So I'll just kind of show you what it looks like. It's going to be an underhand movement here, and uh, you're just going to be about shoulder width loose. You're just going to sit down, you're just going to be pulling it straight down, right under the chin, and go right towards the bar, right to the kind of the upper chest area. And what you really want to do is, is imagine you're pulling with the biceps. Yeah, do you want me to like, arch back a little slightly, bit? Slightly, slightly, but really try yeah. to keep as much vertical as you can. But there'll be some slight, some slight arch in the lower back. Yes, exactly. So this is when you have to consciously try to contract a certain muscle group you're trying to target, in a, especially in a movement like a compound movement here. The back is always going to be activated, slightly the rear delts, but if you get that mind-muscle connection in the biceps and always think about how you're pulling the muscle um, or pulling the weight, um, that's when you can try to contract the biceps as much as you can and target them in a certain movement here. Which it looks, it's looking good. You can see those biceps contracting really well. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Work, man. How's your head? Tall, motherfucker. <laughs> So this is done. I'm done with the uh, chin-ups or slash. We kind of changed up a bit. Well, you can do either or. You can do weighted chin-ups, which would be your own body weight, add a little bit of weight. Um, Lewis did weighted pull-ups a while back. He's still working on his pull-up strength, but it was a good test of his strength. Um, sometimes it's good to kind of feel out where you're at and to feel kind of where your strong points are or weak points. I think Lewis is still kind of working on that pull-up strength doing a lot better, but in this case, we wanted to help isolate the biceps a little bit more and not involve too much of the back. I think if we try to do weighted chin-ups, what happens if, like we said before, if you're trying to isolate a certain muscle group, it's gonna be kind of hard to isolate it if you're, if it's a little difficult, the, mo the motion, the movement. So we did the pull-down machine here so we could adjust the weight a bit more, and that way, Lewis, you can concentrate a little bit more on the biceps. Feel it, squeeze it, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yep. So let's go a little bit wider. About that, perfect. Okay, pretty much bench curls. Just gonna curl straight up. Nice and slow. Good. It's not gonna be too heavy. We're gonna start loose a little bit lighter here. Loose his arms are fatiguing, we're just kind of talking over. Um, so in this case, to help him control the weight, the motion, we're gonna start here and see how he feels, especially when you're isolating a muscle group. Whenever you're isolating something, you just gotta be careful how heavy you go. Because like we were saying before, if you're going too heavy, other muscle groups start taking over, form breaks, a big compound movement. Um, you're really working multiple muscle groups. So obviously you can go a lot heavier in that sense. But the isolations always keep it a little bit lighter for joint sake, health, safety. And um, there we go. That being said, how'd it feel? Good. Yeah? A little lighter. Yeah, it's a little light. A little light. Okay, good. So we got some good feedback. So we'll get him up to the weight up just a bit. Probably 2.5 pounds, 5 pounds in total. Let's see how that feels. We got two more sets. Louis is rocking. Yeah. Okay. Louis' question of the day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what is your guys' favorite, or who is your guys' favorite actor? Who's your favorite actor? Nice. Comment below. Who's yours? Probably say Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. Uh, you have Ashton Kutcher vibe. Maybe it's the hair. Maybe it's like the that Sony show. Yeah. No, his hair is. His hair is a lot longer. Something like that, yeah. What's your. Do you have a favorite movie you use in? Probably Dude, Where's My Car? No. Okay, okay. I don't know. He plays in a lot of good movies. Yeah, like what? Like. No Strings Attached is a good one. What is it? No Strings Attached. No Strings Attached. I don't think I've seen that one. It's a good one. Nice. Have uh, you seen the Steve Jobs one? No, uh, yeah. You, you did. See, that wasn't so good. That was the right. reaction. That wasn't so good. Or the butterfly effect. That one's super weird. Is it weird? Have I've you never seen, seen that it? one. No. It's super weird. Is it? It has like flashbacks. And, or it like reads a journal and like goes back in time. And stuff. Okay. It's, really it's trippy, huh? Now I gotta have like a marathon of Ashton Kutcher movies yeah. and then I'll come back and have the talking points. Okay. Yeah, nice. Good tempo. Good, looking strong. I think for the last set, uh, well, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. It's feeling good. Feeling yeah. good. Do you like this preacher bench setup? Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. Bar's a little weird though. The it's bar's a little awkward. It, it's. Yeah, I would like to go a bit higher because 
positioning of your, <laughs> your torso, but unfortunately you got to work with what you got in this. Yeah. You go up a little bit in this, it goes way too far up. So that's when you have to just kind of make some tech risk. And the thing is too with this one, um, you're, you've actually been really good, but what a lot of people, maybe if, you, if you're wondering on a preacher bench, keep your hips back. And what that's going to do is going to allow you to concentrate more on the biceps. Because a lot of times if it gets too heavy, your hips will pull forward and then all of a sudden you're arching back and you're doing this. And all of a sudden you're utilizing some of the hip motion and shoulder movement to help out with the exercise. So if you always keep your hips kind of back, your what chest against you chest just press against this exactly chest against that but and then the hips back because if your hips start sliding forward here you're getting uh, that's basically the, how, the way to cheat in this exercise so if you keep your hips back it's immediately going to put a lot more um, emphasis on the, on the biceps there so but you've been doing fine it's been good so you're going to wrap your thumb something you can do either, either or um, sometimes when you wrap your thumb right in the, in the kind of bend of the bar here it kind of makes it easier um, to grip it elbows going to be tight He's been curling it straight up, so you're still working on elbow flexion. But now with the supinated, or excuse me, with the uh, pronated grip, Am I there's standing? Gonna, you are standing, yeah. And you can put a little bit more pressure on the, the um, extensors of the forearm, but you're still going to be feeling the bicep. So, yeah. Here we go. Want a break? You ready? How are you feeling? Need water? Uh, not that water. <laughs> not that water, yeah. Water's a little warm. So you're just going to grab the barbell. Personally, I like tucking my thumb under the bar. Uh, you can curl it over the bar if you want. Um, but for me, it gives me a farther range of motion if my thumb's under the bar. And you can do it either on your legs here. You can see that your forearm's supported. You leave enough room um, for your wrist motion here. And you're just curling it with your fingers, essentially, just like the name explains. You're going to bring it all the way down to the ends. And you're going to slowly curl it up, squeeze the top and then right back down. You can make an adjustment where you go a bit closer and you put it at the edge of the bench and use the bench for here. And you can do the exact same motion there. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. So, <coughs> right Straight up. Yes, sir, and you got to stop. Yeah, I just do Okay, thank you. Thank God. You made, some, you made a wise decision there. It's hurt your wrist. Positioning. So we're going to switch this up. And Luce is going to be grabbing this, raising it straight out and curl it. So it's it's kind of generally the same as a finger curl because you're still using a lot of flexion and using those the, the flexors of the, the forearm there. You ready for this? Yeah. Have you done these before? Nope. Oh man, I remember doing these all the time in high school. Like this is the they only thing they have these. They don't do them. How many do you want me to do this? Uh, all the way up. Twelve times. And then let it slide out. Let's just go all the way up until you can't do more. It doesn't matter. Don't even count. Let's bring it out. Yep. Oh, yeah. Try to hold it all the way up. Until that weight hits the, hits the pole there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the burn. This is actually a fun exercise. That's why I really enjoy it. Because it kind of, you have a goal in mind to give you up. Keep it there and slowly let it out. Up. Oh, yeah. This is it. Oh, <laughs> Okay, you dig right. Yeah. What do you think this one? It's uh, pretty hard. Yeah. Pretty tiring. A lot better than the other one. 
Yeah. Okay. So we made a little variation. Now this is actually something good to keep in mind. If you're ever experiencing any kind of pain and discomfort in an exercise, you can always switch it up. There's always a variation of an exercise. As long as you know what muscle you're working, and in this case, working the forearms, specifically the flex of the forearms, there's always going to be a variation of an exercise. You can change it up to bring a lot more comfort um, into the certain exercise, but still isolate the same, the same muscle group. Is isolating your forearms the only way your forearms are going to get bigger? Uh, yeah, I mean, they'll gain strength. So if you're doing like deadlifts, pull-ups, you're stressing your grip. So you're going to be able to gain strength in your grip itself. But unfortunately, to gain size or hypertrophy in a muscle, a lot of times you're going to have to kind of isolate it in a way. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much one way to make them grow is to isolate it with something like this for sure. Yeah. And you know, it's not just the workout or exercise that makes you grow. What's, what does it really make you grow? What do you mean, my forearms? Anything. The food. Yeah, yeah. You cheated a little bit with cutting <laughs> behind the scenes there, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And rest. Yeah. Lots of rest. That'll help too. So, you ready? Sure. Let's do it. Good, good, good stop. Nice. I think that was still failure. I think yeah. that was good. Nice work. That's, That's the biggest failure face from Lewis I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's shown some real emotions. Going hardcore on that one. Take a little break. We'll get one more. Lewis is done. And you're good. You're good. Oh. One. Perfect. So that was Lewis's first arm day. How'd yeah. it feel? Good. It's tiring. I feel like I fatigue a lot faster, but it's good. You gonna hit us with a single bicep salute, Lewis? Uh, sure. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have an attitude. You gotta say, you gotta say something with that single bicep salute. What do you do? What's the words? Stay buff. Yeah, always. Always. You gotta flex though. What does he mean flex? I wanna flex. There we go. He doesn't wanna flex. Flex is for you. And then I say always. All right. Stay buff. Always. Yeah.